The colobus monkey can be found in Kenya's coastal forest and highland regions. In the past, the animal was hunted excessively for its beautiful fur. Its skin, too, was used to make dance costumes, hats, and capes. Today, the biggest threat to the colobus is human encroachment on its forest habitat. For two decades, the Colobus Conservation Group has worked hard to prevent these unusual species from going extinct. It works with local communities to raise awareness. This looks like a wild habitat, but it's not. The monkeys here live in a rescue center near Kenya's Diani Beach Resort. Behind this entrance is a strip of forest wedged between hotels and cottages. Deforestation has put the monkeys under pressure. The community has been really helpful uh, since uh, our organization was formed. Uh, when they come across any sick, injured or dead monkey, uh, they normally call us. We do have our vet clinic here whereby we take care of all the emergencies. The black and white colobus monkeys are especially endangered. They are hunted for their exotic fur or are injured by touching overhead power cables. There are only a few hundred colobus monkeys left in the area. The center keeps the rescued ones in cages for their safety. Many people view the monkeys as pests that sometimes steal fruit from the fields. The rescue center runs an educational program for young people to give them a better understanding of the creatures that live around them. My name is Praxidi Swere. I've learned that the colobus monkey, when they give birth, they give birth to children which are white in color. We have been able to, to understand that uh, these uh, colobus monkeys are very important in the ecosystem. They help in uh, uh, dispersing of seed, that is seed dispersal, and that ensures that there is continuity of a uh, of, of forest because the, once, once the seeds are dispersed, uh, trees are able to continue growing. Slowly, the colobus monkeys' contributions are being appreciated, but their habitat is still shrinking. That's why the rescue center encourages people to plant trees. Uh, before the rain season starts, we normally do uh, indigenous tree sale. We sell the, uh, the trees to the locals around at uh, very cheap prices. We help them to plant trees around. Uh, we insist on the indigenous trees because those are the best for the wildlife we have around here. Trees like the baobab tree, colobus monkeys eat their leaves and blossoms. The monkeys tend not to forage for human food, but rely heavily on the trees and on humans who are wise enough to protect the forest. We end the program with you in South Africa, Felicia, and the issue of climate change, which we in the Southern Hemisphere are feeling just as much as those in the Northern Hemisphere. Right, and that became clear with the months-long drought in and around Cape Town. Water was rationed, tourists stayed away, and people and animals suffered enormously under the sizzling heat. For environmental activist Ndivile Mokwena, climate change arrived a long time ago. She helps female farmers to deal with the economic and social impact of climate change. The focus is on local solutions. Take a look at our profile of a woman who is passionate for the cause. Ndivili Mokoena shows us one of the mine dumps found in and around South Africa's biggest city, Johannesburg. The soil here is full of toxins like arsenic, lead and radioactive uranium. The heavy rains and dust storms that have become more frequent in recent years have spread the contamination, especially around Soweto and its neighbouring townships. Climate change largely is viewed as an environmental issue. However, it encompasses everything. It's a developmental issue, it's a, it's a human rights issue, it's a social issue. You find that uh, when we look at the impacts of climate change, 
and uh, how one can adapt, the most vulnerable are the women and children. Environmentalist Mokuena grew up under the racist apartheid regime. Back then, mining debris was dumped directly next to the townships where black people lived, at a safe distance from affluent white suburbs. As a young girl, she saw how much more vulnerable the poor and disadvantaged were to environmental problems. Women suffered doubly. Not only were they exposed to the hazards, in a deeply entrenched patriarchal society, women have fewer choices and fewer means to protect themselves. That men could dictate a woman's fate was a notion Devili grew up with. Devili did study anyway, earning the money she needed as a bank teller and later as a marketer at a big national newspaper. She got more and more involved in community work. Eventually she quit her job and organized environmental cleanup campaigns in Soweto. Today, Mokuena is the South Africa coordinator for the Gender into Urban Climate Change Initiative. In South Africa, the initiative works together with two cities, Tshwane and Johannesburg. Ndivili is especially interested in introducing climate-smart urban agriculture. In Johannesburg's Jubert Park, an abandoned greenhouse has now become a community garden. The cooperative grows vegetables and medicinal herbs. Currently, the project provides work for formerly jobless women. With a changing climate, agricultural practices have to change too. The project teaches women farmers how to adapt sustainably in order to ensure income and food security in the future. So here in Greenhouse, as we're doing organic vegetables, it helps us to sustain our, ourselves because we sell our organic vegetables to the local uh, market, so we are able to have something every week. Making themselves heard by policymakers remains a big challenge. The city government had agreed to renovate the greenhouse, but cut the funding at the last minute. It's still a long way to go, but um, we will keep on raising our voice and keep on commenting and uh, uh, critiquing their, their, their policies and make recommendations, identify gaps where there are gaps. It's work that takes strength and perseverance, and Devili Mokowena has plenty of both. And that's it from Record Africa this week, your environment magazine packed with bright ideas from Africa and Europe. And of course, together with my colleague, thank you so much, Felicia. It was fun having you on the show today. Thanks, Enti. It was simply great to be here. I'm already looking forward to the next show. Now, if you have any points to make or ideas on environmental protection that you'd like to share, please do contact us on our social media. The addresses will be coming up in a moment. Thank you for joining us. I'm Felicia Endersby from Johannesburg, South Africa. And until next time, bye-bye.